Hello, and welcome to another video. This one we're going to talk about what I think is the number one skill that I've picked up as a software engineer, and I'm going to lay it out in a very, very easy to follow pattern that hopefully you can use yourself to make better bug reports. You can also use this to ask better questions and other stuff like that, um, but it's, it's a communication tool to help you get other people to help you better, basically. Um, and we're, we're, it's, it's four easy steps and I'm going to go over each of those four steps, uh, and hopefully you'll learn something through this. Anyway, let's jump into it. Also, if you've been sent this by someone else, don't feel bad about this. I was really awful about asking questions and making bug reports myself. And this is something that I learned over time. And that's why I'm sharing this with you. Um, but anyway, let's, let's start with, you know, I have some sort of problem that I need to make a bug report for. Um, I'm actually just going to type up notes because that's probably the easiest way for you to all read this at once. And so we'll make this big. Sure. Okay, so we're going to take a four-step approach to asking uh, or reporting a bug or asking a question or something like that. And the first step is to make sure you give the other person context as to why you are doing something. So the first step is uh, let them know why. And this is really, really important because sometimes uh, when you're reporting a bug, you might get into you know, a, a bit of a tunnel vision as to what you think is the problem and what you think the solution might be, but you might be completely off base and in some sort of uh, local minima. This is often referred to as an XY problem where you think the solution is Y to your X problem, but you don't actually tell the other person your X, so they can't really know what you're trying to do. And so, you know, uh, useful to avoid x, y problem, uh, give, oops, we spelled useful wrong, give the other person enough context to help you. So hopefully this is, you know, tell, tell them your scenario, tell, you, tell them what you're trying to do, and that sort of stuff. All right, so the next step to this four-step process is to tell them what you did. Uh, tell them what you did. And what this usually means is telling them all about your environment, what commands you ran, um, stuff like that. So and tell them the versions of the things you're using. Tell them what command you ran. Uh, things like that. So give, give them enough information to sit in your shoes and replicate whatever behavior you're seeing. Um, the third thing is to tell them what you expected to see. So usually when you're reporting a bug, something went wrong, it didn't work how you wanted it to. Uh, tell them what you expect to see. Now this part is you know, not so important and kind of optional. And um, you know, again, you might still be stuck in this XY problem from part one, hopefully by telling them, you know, what your problem is. They may discount your step three as something that's not important, um, but telling them what you expect to see, you know, can, can frame your, uh, where, where you're coming from on your, your bug report or your question. Um, and so this might be like, I expected to see this output, for example, you know, like outputs, uh, side effects, et cetera. Uh, describe the behaviors that you want to see. Um, and then the fourth is to tell them what happened. And this is to make sure that you, you know, whatever you did, and then tell them exactly the outputs or exactly the side effects or exactly what crash happened. So this is outputs, crash reports, etc. And that's it. This is all you really need to make a basic a uh, good bug report. Now I'm gonna give you a couple more hints after this about some other tips that you can do after you've gotten to this point because I think this is like a good bare minimum that would improve probably about 95% of the bug reports that I receive um, from customers. <laughs> if people followed this structure, that would solve so many more problems and uh, it would get people off on a better foot for, <laughs> for going from a, a client, um, client customer relationship. Um, but anyway, some things where I've seen this go wrong is people skipping step one and you know falling into this X Y problem where you know they're trying to solve some some problem and they've tunnel visioned on a solution, uh, but it's actually irrelevant to their original problem. 
Um, they may also make assumptions about how things work. And so without telling you what's going on, they might be stuck on those, those incorrect assumptions. I've also had people say, oh, it's just broken and like not actually telling them what they're running or what versions they're using. Sometimes by you know, forcing someone to tell you what version is, it'll be really obvious that they're using you know, a two years out of date piece of software or something or they don't show their configuration file, you might not be able to know whether they've configured something properly or not. Um, and knowing the exact command they ran can be helpful if I need to go through and try and do exactly what they're doing. Uh, this one is less important from the other three. Um, you know, sometimes this can help with the XY problem and where they communicate their expectations and that sort of stuff. Um, and four is the most important. And I've seen, I've seen some really uh, unfortunate reports where there's either no output, no crash report, nothing, um, to the ones that are like borderline malicious, where they show an output but they have doctored it in a way. Uh, that's impossible, essentially. They've, they've lied about their outputs. So this is really important to make sure that you're producing exactly the output. Now, the one case where you can kind of bend the rules here is if your output happens to contain sensitive information, things like you know, passwords or, or user data or something like that. Uh, now note, like your username isn't really sensitive information, so redacting that usually isn't important, uh, but some people do that as well. And, um, cool. So let's talk about some extensions to this that can make that can take your report to the next level. And these are, you know, again, kind of optional. The first four are what I think are the most important. And this is number five is to try and take your reproduction and minimize it. Um, so it may be that your, you know, your one through four here describes a large system where like, I don't know, you might be working in a work repository, which has hundreds of thousands of lines. And like, you can't realistically pass that off to a third party and expect them to debug your problem for you. And so minimizing your reproduction basically means to take whatever large system you're experiencing your problem in and eliminate as many variables as possible. And this might be like, you know, deleting most of your configuration or, uh, you know, finding which exactly which part of your file is causing a bug or something like that. Um, and this can be useful, you know, useful to eliminate a lot of noise. Uh, and this helps the maintainer a lot because it gives them exactly what they need to see um, when, when diagnosing your problem. Narrow to exactly your problem. The other cool thing about minimizing your reproduction, and honestly, a lot of times when I go through my own framework here and I get to this minimize your reproduction step, I will have narrowed down my code to a very, very specific piece of code and I will have understood the bug much better because I have you know, done some amount of effort to eliminate false positives or false causes to the issues. And a lot of times, you know, by re reproducing just a minimal reproduction, I will have figured out that, oh, it wasn't a bug after all and it was really just, oh, I had this other thing that was you know, causing something silly. And uh, so this can often be useful for completely eliminating the process entirely. Now, the last step, or the, the last other optional thing is to do some debugging. And this one is especially optional if you're working with tools and systems that you don't understand. And so this is again why this is kind of the, <laughs> the next level of asking a good, or reporting a good bug. And this is to actually dive into the code yourself, set some breakpoints, figure out exactly what's going on, and uh, you know, do what the maintainer would do to figure out the problem. Um, and again, like this isn't super required because you may be working, you know, the tool may be written in a language you don't understand. It may be some you know tooling that you don't understand. And so like this is okay to just completely skip. But if if you can get to this step, it can often help the maintainer a lot more uh, because you can point exactly to the source code problem and say like, oh, well, if, you know, if this did something else, it might be better. You also might get to a point where you can make a pull request for this and automatically you know, fix, solve your own problem for yourself. Now, one thing that I would caution you with, you know, making pull requests directly when you find, you know, when you find the, the answer from step six is I would caution you to first make a bug report. That way you have something to reference and uh, it gives the maintainer a little bit more context about what you're working with. Because uh, if you just lead with a pull request, they don't know why you've made that pull request. You haven't, you know, you haven't gone through this process to 
to give them the information to help you solve your problem. Um, so I, I often start, even if I know that my solution is the right solution to the problem, I will still start with a bug report to um, you know, give them enough context. Another thing that you can do instead, if you don't want to have the overhead of making you know, both a bug and a pull request, is to kind of inline this information inside your pull request body. That way all of the context is still there and they can still figure out why you're doing this. Um, but yeah. And I think, I <laughs> like I said before, I think this is the most important thing that I've learned in software engineering and this has helped me a lot in communicating with other people and getting to the bottom of problems really quickly and effectively. Um, while also, you know, hopefully being less frustrating in back and forth. Because um, remember, they can't see your screen, so they don't they don't know what problem you're experiencing, and so using this framework can help communicate what's going on to the other person. Anyway, hopefully this is useful. If there are additional things you'd like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.